In a sea of releases in the BL genre, the Pizza Delivery Man and the Go Palace is a hidden gem that is not getting quite the attention or popularity it deserves. At least not in comparison to a manual like Jinx that took only five chapters for me to decide it was a no for me. BL manga often attracts its fans with attractive characters, amazing art, smut, and plots, sometimes very twisted plots. And the Pizza Delivery Man and the Go Palace definitely has attractive characters, really good art, and a very good plot, quite possibly one of the best and most impactful I've ever read in manga. But the smut does not even happen till the second season of the series. And yet, I still hold my stance that this is one of the best BL manhwas you'll ever read. So why exactly do I think that and what sets this series apart from every other BL manhwa? The first thing is one that I already mentioned, the deep impact the series has on you even with no smart in its first season. Yep, you are able to get a good read from just the plot and attractive characters. The second element is the author of the series, Oppie, who deserves a mention because I am going to discuss a completed work of theirs that was just as impactful. Their works are equal parts heartbreaking and wholesome. They're the kind of stories that by the end of them have you thinking, I'm so happy you both found each other and I wish you all the happiness life has to offer, even though they're fictional characters. So much of their struggles closely mirror reality that you can't help but immerse yourself in them and their breakthrough gives you hope and that extra push to hold on in your own life. I'll start by discussing the Pizza Delivery Man and the Go Palace, an ongoing work of the author, and then later go over a completed work of theirs that I highly recommend as well. The story starts out by introducing a luxury apartment called the Gold Palace that houses wealthy people. The Gold Palace is well known amongst delivery men because its residents often give large delivery tips, despite the fact that tipping is not a customary culture. It is also where one of the main characters resides and immediately gives meaning to the title of the series. The main character, Do Wu Won, is laid off from one of his many part-time jobs in the first few chapters, and there's already an atmosphere of dread surrounding him because that was his highest paying job and one that he couldn't afford to lose. While discussing the situation with a friend, his friend mentions that her aunt owns a pizzeria that is in need of delivery drivers. She sure will want to get a job on the spot because her aunt only hires good looking people, but don't let that turn you off from reading the series. Yes, the beauty standard in South Korea is a huge problem and it shows in all of their media, but it is more of a plot device in the series and doesn't take away from the main focus of the plot. The pizzeria is close to the gold palace, so a lot of deliveries are made there, and with its residents' generous tips, this is a great option for Wuwon. One is a character who you can automatically tell is not doing too well financially. He's living paycheck to paycheck while trying to pay the medical expenses of his alien mother as well as the debts that they've both been saddled with by his father. With his father out of the picture and his mom not being in a position to work, all the responsibility for both these bills fall on one. And regardless of how he works tirelessly and tries to remain optimistic, there are situations in the series that deal a heavy blow to his well thought out plans, creating this cloud of hopelessness and loneliness that sometimes hangs over him. The other main character, Kang so as mentioned earlier, is a resident of the Gold Palace, so he's in a much better place financially, but he has his own problems to deal with. so -An is introduced as a character dealing with panic attacks and social phobia, but also comes from a family that is very abusive. There hasn't been a specific mention of physical abuse in the series so far, but there are visible marks that allude to that fact, and in nearly every interaction with some of his family members, the emotional abuse is obvious. The main one being how dismissive they are of his mental issues and how it's used as an attack against how capable he is as an individual. So An and Wuwon encounter each other for what seems like the first time when Wuwon makes a pizza delivery to Soan's apartment, but unbeknownst to Wuwon, he had helped out Soan before. Soan also notices that despite his social phobia that makes it hard to meet new people, he strangely feels very comfortable around Wuwon, and after mentioning this to his therapist, she encourages him to pursue a relationship with Wuwon in hopes that it will improve his health. And with a convenient series of events, the opportunity to do just that presents itself to Soan. And although Soan had an ulterior motive in the initial stages of their relationship and Wuwon was wary of his kindness, their relationship eventually grows into a genuine friendship where they could both share their struggles with each other and they were both met with understanding from the other person. This friendship becomes so much more for Soan who starts to develop feelings for Wuwon and his feelings seem one-sided at first, but it also becomes obvious that Wuwon feels the same way. So An tries to confess his feelings a couple of times only to be met with rejection, which is not easy on Wuwon either. He obviously feels the same way but has come up with multiple reasons to convince himself why pursuing the relationship further will be a mistake. He however eventually decides to hold on to something he genuinely wants for once instead of always dealing with the regret of letting go. 
The series is currently a couple of chapters into its second season, but despite its ongoing status, this is a 5 star series for me because unlike a lot of BL manhwa these days that tend to focus on a lot of smut, toxic relationships and misunderstandings to further their plot, this author chooses to cover complex topics like mental health and the struggles of just going through everyday life in their works. They have this satisfying feeling of seeing someone who is struggling through life and tired of living overcome those hard times and eventually get to a point where their life feels like one that's worth living. This author does such a good job of presenting the state of mind of both characters and giving them death. Their internal struggles are palpable and immersive, so the feeling of triumph feels all the more gratifying when it's achieved. The other work of the authors I'll recommend is a short completed one titled My Way With You. This one has a college setting and has more smuts than the first one as the main characters are introduced to have met each other as a result of a one night stand. Again, this does not take away from how impactful of a read it is, it's just an added bonus. This series, however, does have a suicide trigger warning, so please proceed with that in mind. The first of the main characters we're introduced to is Drew Giran. Giran was orphaned at a very young age and his only living family member was his grandmother and probably out of a deep appreciation for the fact that he was not all alone in the world, he was motivated to work hard at succeeding academically and creating a life of comfort for his grandmother. He however loses all of that motivation as well as his will to live when his grandmother passes right before he graduates from college. Giran was an honor student who got into college on scholarship, but suddenly he's failing classes and existing as a shell of himself. The other main character, Big Song Kyung, is also an orphan who lost his parents in an accident they were all in, but he woke up to the reality that he was now all alone in the world. And you see him going through a period in his life where he really struggled with the fact that he survived and not in a survivor's guilt type of way. He wasn't feeling guilty that he survived, he was wondering why the hell he didn't die with his parents. The two of them developed their relationship from their one night stand and eventually grow to enjoy each other's presence. But there was more to their story because they had met each other in the past. This story was a very satisfying read and the journey from why am I alive to thank you for staying alive in both characters was a very emotional one. In fact, the end is so satisfying, you get an entire chapter of them being the most domestic, signally sweet couple ever, but you can't even hate it because after all they had both been through, they deserved nothing less. I love both of these stories with my entire heart and I feel like they healed something in me I didn't even realize was broken. They are very relatable and show how the presence of someone who understands you, supports you, loves you and wishes you well can make a huge impact on how you view life. At the end of the day, that is something we all deserve and stories like this remind you of that. So if you haven't checked either of these out, make sure you change that today or make plans to change that. And if you are already familiar with either or both of them, feel free to drop a comment to gush about how much you love them. That brings this video to an end and whatever day you find yourself watching this, make it a great one and I'll see you in my next video.